As you look at this type of parenting style, some of you guys are sitting there going, I don't want to be either of these. Do I, are these my only two choices? Either let them do everything or let them do nothing? Here's the scary thing. A lot of us don't think about the fact that, you know, we've got our kids, and to be honest, the day they turn age 18, they could look at us and say, I'm out of here, and they can do whatever they want. They can download what they want. They can watch what they want. Are we equipping them for that day? Are we equipping them for the day that they, like Daniel, will be plucked from the safety of their, uh, their safe upbringing and thrown in the middle of a secular culture? And will our kids by themselves resolve to not defile themselves? Are we equipping them for that day? And some of us, as we sit there and think, well, how do we do this? How can we start having this dialogue in our home? How can we start having these conversations? Because the answer truly shouldn't be just block them from everything. Maybe we could talk about this, but I don't want to subject them to it. It's not like let's just rent bad movies and let them watch it so we can talk about it. No, it's not that. Uh, you know, what's this look like? Where's the balance? Where do we look for guidance? Um, if we had time, I'd love to actually peek at... Deuteronomy 6, and we're not, uh, because we're going we're to jump somewhere else, but I mean, Deuteronomy 6 is an example of one of those passages that gives some really good guidance. It's where Moses was talking literally to the whole community of people the same way I'm talking to you guys this morning. And as he talked to the whole community, which there was parents, there was grandparents, there was aunts, there was uncles, there was probably single people without kids, there was, uh, as he talked to literally the entire community, he, all of a sudden, he addresses the parents and he says, guess what? This stuff that we've been learning, this, you know, everything that we've experienced, everything that we've seen with God, he goes, and remember that, and that's literally where he said, God will impress this on our hearts. And he says, also, and he goes on and says, impress this stuff on your children. Talk about it when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, um, when you lie down, when you get up. This sounds a little bit more than just drop them off at youth group once a week, doesn't it? This is a lot. I mean, he didn't just say, oh, drop them off at church, they'll be fine. This is, hey, when you get them up in the morning, help them remember what God did for us so they don't forget. As they're walking along the road and going throughout the day, tell them about God and what he did for them. As you're going to bed at night, don't let them forget these laws and these commands and all this different stuff. And a lot of parents, we sit there and go, How, what's it even look like today? I mean, let's be honest. I'm at work during the day. I get home. Kids are in sports. They're there. I might get a good night prayer. How am I supposed to do this all day? And to be honest, a lot of us as parents, we're so overwhelmed that when we see a passage like that, we're just like, you know, forget about it. You know, I, They'll be fine. We'll just drop them off at youth group, you know, and, and, and Jarm and Nick and them, they'll, they'll take care of it, you know, as, as, as long as, you know, as long as, you know, I'm doing that once a week and stuff like that, it'll be fine. But sadly, as our young people are looking for guidance, if we're not there to give that to them in life, then they're going to look elsewhere. And one of the places that they'll probably look is the place that's constantly flowing information to them, and that is the media. Because media has just this steady stream going to kids' ears. As a matter of fact, a bunch of secular doctors got together and they actually started counting the hours per day that kids were absorbing media. Because pediatricians were saying, we're seeing kids make all these decisions and all these doctors agree this media absolutely affects them. Let's look exactly how much media there is. And you can see reports out there from the Journal of Pediatrics, from Kaiser. You'll see reports of media from Nielsen, from Pew Internet. I mean, you'll see all these different reports. And it's funny, so many of them go back to this one. This is um, the report from the Kaiser Foundation. This is the Big Daddy report that comes out every five years. Everybody, if you picked up the newspaper, you probably heard this one reported because this is one of those reports where they take 8 through 18 year olds and they actually start uh, asking all of them how much time they spend and they track how much time they're spending watching TV, listening to music, uh, using the internet. And they actually put it on this chart and they show the different years. And in 2009, because this report came out in 2010, another one will come out in a couple of years here. In 2009, they added up all the hours and this number right here, they came up with Per day, the average 8 through 18-year-old absorbs 10 hours and 45 minutes of media per day, all shoved into 7 hours and 38 minutes. 
How's that? That's because of multitasking. Picture this. Kids got iTunes playing while browsing through Facebook, sometimes even maybe YouTube or a DVD on or something like that. And if you add all that together, it was 10 hours and 45 minutes shoved into seven and a half hours. And some of you guys might say, wow, seven and a half hours? Really? That's a lot. Yeah, this doesn't even include texting. <laughs> yeah, add that in there, okay? Now, you might look and you'd sit the breakdown and you know, four and a half hours is the average that uh, an 8 to 18 year old watches TV per day. Some parents are like, my kids don't watch four and a half hours of TV. Well, if your kids only watch like an hour or two of TV in a given day, don't worry. If they don't watch four hours, there's some kid across the country making up for that and is watching about six hours or something. This is just the average. Matter of fact, do you know the average TV in America is on over five hours? And it's on usually during dinner. And it's on whether or not people are watching it or not. TV is huge in America. We love our TVs. We'll be talking a little bit more about that uh, in, in the workshop. The bottom line is kids are absolutely immersed in this culture. And you could think about it, and even if your kids might maybe aren't TV watchers, think about in your home, is music turned on? When is it turned on? As they get up, as they go through the day, as they're walking along the road, as they go to bed at night? Yeah, they're kind of doing that Deuteronomy 6 thing with their iPods, aren't they? They are absolutely absorbing media, young people today. And what do we do? How do we respond to kids that are absolutely immersed in teaching that's coming through maybe little white headphones and through screens, big and portable ones that they can pull right out of their pockets? How is it that we can respond to this culture?